Here we go. All right. So I should prep you. Who here has seen me speak before? Okay. The ones that didn't, just deal. <laughs> okay. That's right. Buckle up. That's exactly right. Okay, this is kicking the donkey of PostgreSQL replication. Uh, I think we all know what donkey means. Uh, yes, I have Donald Trump up here. I make fun of politicians because they're all crooks. Um, I will say this, uh, Bernie Sanders, I do not believe is a crook, uh, but there's also a reason he's not gonna win. So, Donald, he took his home state. Uh, I, I think that was probably a given, no matter what. Uh, he's kind of got that whole New York thing going. I mean, look at him. He looks like a New Yorker. Um, <laughs> warned you. OK, making PostgreSQL great again. We know his uh, tagline. Everybody's seen him. Uh, I am with Command Prompt Inc. We are the oldest PostgreSQL company in existence that I know of. There might be one in Japan or something, but in terms of the Western world, we're it. Talk to me. Oh, there we go. Come here. Back up. What are you doing? Maybe I should be running a Mac. Okay. This talk is... <laughs> there we go. This talk is for adults that are comfortable in their own skin. To give you an idea, these are the comics I enjoy. If these comics are a problem with you or for you, you really should leave. I don't mean that as a bad thing. I understand that there are people that can only tolerate vanilla ice cream, and that's okay. But I'm not that person. That is all I'm going to say. You've gotten your warning. If you complain afterward, kiss my ass. Who am I? I am at Linux Hiker. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Feel free to face, uh, friend me on Facebook if you want to be trolled. That's the only purpose for Facebook. I'm on Facebook because my daughters are on Facebook. I am not on Facebook because I want to be on. No, I take that back. I'm also on Facebook to troll Bernie Sanders fans um, because it's easy. It is so easy. You think it's easy to troll Hillary fans or Trump fans? I mean, it is because we all kind of get wrapped up in the ideology. But Bernie fans are great, because even when they're 60, they think like they're under 30. So I am the lead consultant of Command Prompt, Inc. I'm also a director for Software in the Public Interest. That is the nonprofit behind Debian, uh, PostgreSQL.org versus US, uh, LibreOffice in the United States, and a whole slew of others. And what we do is basically provide a financial and legal umbrella for those projects. DebConf, for example, runs through software in the public interest, so they can sign contracts, take money, things like that. Uh, if you saw the opening, I'm also a director and a founder of United States PostgreSQL, which is putting on this lovely conference. I am a major contributor to the project. I don't contribute code that much anymore, and even when I did contribute code, it took a lot of work for me to make it anywhere near reasonable. Uh, I'm a practitioner. I'm a consultant. Uh, I can code when I have to. Specifically C. I'm actually a competent Python developer. Uh, and I hail from Washington State. If you do not know what that leaf is, you are not living a proper life. <laughs> this is one of my things. I actually am a BSD fan. I don't have a problem with closed source software. Uh, but I do believe that if you are an open source advocate and you are using things like Slack, anything that's proprietary that has an open source alternative. I understand that, for example, there is no open source alternative yet for Google Docs. Great, use Google Docs. But if there is an open source alternative, you should be using it. Otherwise, you're not actually an open source advocate. You're a leech. You're not actually providing for the community. Now, that's a little harsh. I already gave you the disclaimer. And actually, this used to be, specifically, I used to have a logo right here. It was a three-letter logo, and it was orange and black. And then underneath it, it said something like the Enterprise Postgres Company. Um, their current uh, slogan is like Postgres Rocks or something. Uh, I don't do that anymore because they're actually a really good community member. 
Uh, and they've kind of owned up and they've admitted we're not an open source company, and they're not. They contribute to open source, but they're a closed source company, and that's cool. I dig that, that's fine. At least you're, you're being straight with people and you're making your money, that's all cool. Proactive SLA, this is the one thing that I'll sell from command prompt. I don't like doing sales. Uh, I don't employ salespeople ever. In fact, I've had salespeople come to me and say, hey, I wanna sell for you, and I said, that's why you're not being hired. Um, it's not that salespeople don't have their purpose. I know they do, and I know that companies with salespeople make more money than we do, but I am far happier. Um, it's a remote DBA sysadmin thing, proactive response, and the way we do the proactive response is we install a monitoring inf infrastructure that alerts us 24-7 so we can take care of you. It, com it includes four hours of DBA or sysadmin, it's 24-7, 365. After the four hours, you get a flat rate, so you don't have emergency fees or after-hour fees or anything like that. You have a reliable cost structure to, to uh, rely on. Uh, and it's enterprise-wide, and what that means is, is when your Ruby on Rails developers screw everything up and you fire them because of it, and then everything dies and you need help now, we'll help you with that too. Now, we might have to read the docs because we're sane enough not to do Ruby on Rails every day, um, but we'll get it fixed. And that's from 13 dollars a month. That's my one little sales pitch. What are we talking about? We're talking about replication options, the pros, the cons, tools to make your life easier. What the hell were they thinking? Guaranteed not to be in order. I only say that because although my slides, I think, are in order, uh, I tend to be a little ad hoc. I don't script this stuff. It, it just kind of comes out, skips over the filter, and hopes nobody cries. Uh, and PG Logical. Are you le using less than 9.1 upgrade? Period. It's end of life this fall. I, I can already see people going, what's wrong with 9.1? Well, one, it's slow as hell compared to 9.2, 9.3, 9.4, 9.5. Do you see where I'm going with this? You're running Windows XP. Upgrade. 9.0 is unsupported. 9.1 is EOL this fall. Even 9.2 is miles ahead, and this is true performance-wise. 9.3 is where we got the management break, where all of a sudden other things that would have been nice to have in terms of monitoring, like PG stat replication, things like that, um, really came about. But 9.2 is extremely performant compared to 9.1 and 9.0. Are you running anything but Linux? 2.6 and 3.8 plus only. 2.6 is a great kernel, but it is also end of life. The problem with 3 series is 3.2 to 3.8 is broken. And I don't mean broken like, oh, we get weird messages in the logs. I mean like 40% IO weight, zero changes to anything, upgrade to 3.9, 12% IO weight. And the re I got some nodders here. The reason is, is there's a bug in PD flush because as awesome as Linux is, it's not tested that well um, that causes this problem. And it's fixed in 3.9. Please upgrade. If you say, I, can on I only run what comes from the distribution, great. But when you call me and say Postgres is slow, I'm going to say, no, you're not listening. Sorry, FreeBSD users, I do love the devil, he just doesn't love me. What do I mean by that? I've been doing this Unix Linux thing for 20, 25 years. I, I didn't start with Linux because when I started, Linux didn't start. <laughs> but uh, I've done Xenix, I've done SCO, I've done HPUX. Uh, I did BSD Lite, which predates FreeBSD. Uh, and I just don't, care for FreeBSD. It's not a technical thing. I know it technically rocks. It's a great piece of software. Are you using Sloney? I am very sorry for you. I have customers, customers that have to use Sloney. It's very unfortunate. It's not that Sloney's bad. It's not. But as I've said many times before, the thing about Sloney is a bunch of engineers, specifically Jan, because I think he's bipolar, um, sat in a room and we said, let's solve a problem. The problem is replication. But instead, he said, let's paint the walls black 
and then said, which shade? So every feature you can think of, Sloney can do. If you have something that can't be solved within the inherent native PostgreSQL replication, Sloney can probably do it, which makes it awesome. But when you have a million knobs to solve one problem, it's very hard to get them all tuned to the right volume. It is trigger-based. It's good for obscure, complicated setups. An example of a great way, time to use Sloney, uh, and I, uh, those who took my backup ta uh, training know this, is I have a customer that is on Solaris Spark on, on Postgres 9, and we are trying to upgrade them to 9.5 on Linux Intel. You can't use binary or replication for that. It must be logical replication. That would be a good place for Sloney. Unfortunately for them, Sloney is too high impact of performance, and so we are trying to come up with something else. Master slave. PostgreSQL supports one master to many slaves. If you think you need multi-master, you likely don't understand the problem. My favorite phone call is from somebody who, one, says, we are an enterprise startup, and we're on AWS. Well, first, if you're, on an enterprise, if you're an enterprise, you're not on AWS. Now, I know there are enterprises that use AWS, and that's fine. Netflix would be an example. But you are, enterprises are not on AWS. They have long learned that it's bare metal where you need to be. And then they say, we need multi-master. I'm like, awesome. Maybe I can get them to pay me to write it. And then I say, well, why? And they said, performance. That is not why you use multi-master. It is not faster, ever. But it does allow you to solve a lot of problems if you can get it right. We don't have multi-master that just works. I don't know of any, and yeah, I know, is any 2Q people in here? Okay, good. So there is this idea of multi-master that works. It's called bi-directional replication, it's BDR. It's actually very, very cool if you're willing to pay for second quadrant to set it up for you and then pay them to support it. Now, that's a great place to be. I personally like that position because I get to get recurring revenue, but I believe the goal is to create software that I only need to support if the customer doesn't want to. I don't want to get paid to support software because they can't figure it out. So that would be my little gripe about BDR, but I do know it works. I've played with it, it's fun, and I'm hoping that they are able to get it into core the goal is to get it into core, but right now it's not even looking like it might get into 9.7 at this point. So we'll see what happens. And scaling is a small percentage of the problem, when it comes, especially when it comes to multi-master. You have all kinds of other issues you need to think about when you're dealing with replication. Here's an example of what else we can do. We can do master-slave, and we can do master-slave to slaves. So we do have cascading replication if it's binary. We do not with logical. Uh, well, Sloney can do it, but PG logical can't. Replication questions. Do we need to do sync or async? Binary or logical, streaming or shipping? And they, streaming or shipping is a fine line, but I'll explain it. Async or sync. Async means the slave may lag behind the master without affecting the performance of the master. Sync means the slave will not lag behind the master, but may affect performance of the master. Let me rephrase, will affect the performance of the master, not may, and this is why. You are writing instead of twice, once the log, once the page, you are writing once the log, then over, over the network, which is likely slower than your drives, even though you got gigabit, to the slave, which then has to validate that it can commit and then talk back with the master to allow it to commit, and it's, it will affect performance. However, it guarantees data consistency between your masters and your slaves, and there is good reason for it when you need it. <clears throat> Async, the pros, it's fast. It's easy to set up, works well over slower networks. As you can see with this graphic, this is perfectly acceptable with async. Even if you wanted to have the master all the way in over one of those backwards countries like England or something. <laughs> Do I have any Europeans in here? 
Okay, I make fun of Europeans because I make a lot of money investing in the euro. So it's kind of an up and down scenario. Um, the cons, slaves may be further behind. Here's the deal. If you're in a data center, if you're directly connected to your slaves, I actually recommend even if you need sync to evaluate that two more times. Because when you're directly connected, async is so fast that you probably don't need sync. And then you don't get the performance hit. But if you are saying, okay, look, in case San Diego, or actually probably San Diego won't implode, but San Francisco implodes because they realize all the political correctness is eating them alive. Um, they ship data over to New York because they realize New York has got it going on and they don't really give a damn if you say something improper because they live it and they love it and they embrace it because we're all different and we enjoy it. Well, eventually this is gonna die and, but you won't take a performance hit and you'll fail over to the disaster recovery. I think this is actually apropos. If this was in San, San Francisco and we said that we had a disaster and we want to recover, so we're going to go to New York. Fail over to here, you're all good to go. But your app doesn't have a problem. You're, you're not going to have a scenario where, if you guys watched the Compose Governor uh, keynote yesterday where he showed the sync would wait, you're not going to have that issue with this setup. The cons are, again, slaves may be further behind, and there is a potential for data loss. Now, you won't lose consistency. You're not going to end up in a situation where the master died and you fail over the slave and the slave doesn't come up right or your foreign keys aren't in the right, you know, you don't have foreign keys that are matching. None of that happens. But you might lose that one transaction or even five transactions that were in process before you failed over. That is possible because you're running async. Sync, pros, zero data loss. Great for load balancing. For those of you, now I am not, suggest, that's not good coloring. It looks much better on my screen. This is actually green, and this is actually brown. And what we're talking about here is um, herbal technology. We'll leave it at that. Um, the green, uh, specifically with red flakes. You, you want little red flakes in it. Uh, that's the good stuff. If you're desperate, poor, or, well, desperate, <laughs> you can use this stuff. But it's kind of like Dunkin' Donuts versus freshly brewed cold press. It, it, it's not going to give you the uh, coffee. It's not going to give you the, right, the same thing. Now, if anyone in here has an actual problem with the fact that I'm talking about cannabis, you really need to read up on the facts, okay? you are more likely to cause a whole heck of a lot of damage to yourself and others doing what we all do at these conferences, which is drink alcohol. Um, and I also didn't touch this stuff. I'll, I have touched this stuff recently. Um, but I had never touched this stuff, not once in my life, before it became legal, which a lot of people are like, yeah, right. No, but it's true. Um, but I have since um, because, well, Life is hard, and this makes it easier. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm going to say something, and I don't know if you'll believe me, but it is true. I use it for pain. Um, I, I have back issues and knee issues and all kinds of other stuff. But zero data loss, great for load balancing. Absolutely. You want to bounce PG pool 2 in front of synchronous cluster and do read load balancing, and you want to guarantee that the slaves are at the exact same point as your master, that's the way to go. Now, I usually set up PG pool on an async scenario, and I still get the same benefit, but that's because we're not necessarily dealing with real-time data. The cons, and this is, I love this one, if the slave goes down, it's an outage on the master. I'm gonna repeat that. If you are running sync replication, if the slave goes down, it's an outage on your master, okay? Just think real hard about that. Writes will be slower. It's highly subject to network speed, but the master outage can be mitigated with this. You could script this out um, or even use set global or set local. I don't remember, what, do you remember what it is? The newer versions of Postgres, you don't actually have to edit the file. You can do it from an, an SQL command. I can't remember. It's like set local or set global or something. And, but you can s remove the, s the name of the slave from synchronous standby names and then reload. Yes? 
Alter system set. Okay, alter system set. You can uh, edit the synchronous standby names, remove the name, and then reload, and your master will come back up. And obviously, if you have a proper monitoring infrastructure, this could actually do it for you. You don't actually have to physically do it. You have it all nice and scripted, right? You script everything you do, right? We're not hand typing this stuff. And hopefully you document it. I know that's bull, but hopefully you document it. I know it's bull because that's how I make my money. Well, yeah, we have this DBA who was a Rails developer. Um, <laughs> whoop. And uh, we had to, um, well, he had to go on sabbatical never to come back. And we don't know what he was doing. And then we get to go in there and go, yeah, neither do we. And so we have to document it all and figure it all out. Do I have any Rails developers in here that I'm hurting the feelings of? OK, good. Um, binary or logical? This is binary. They're identical. They're like clones. Aren't they cute? I actually, I, actually, I, was, I typed in um, clones into Google Images. And I had safe search turned on, so I only got this. Um, and it was, <laughs> okay, like I said, this is not planned. This stuff just kind of comes out, okay? Um, but, and then, of course, my daughters walked by, and my daughters were like, oh, it's so cute. I was like, all right, I'll use it. So this is binary replication. With PostgreSQL, you have identical copies of the database. Down, I mean, they're identical clusters. If you were to pick one up with a tarball or something and ship it over to another machine and drop it off and start it up, it's still identical. Assuming that it's, you know, Little Indian and Little Indian versus trying to cross the architectural boundaries. This is logical. We got Darth Vader. And you're thinking, well, logical's not bad. No, logical's not bad. But Darth Vader's a badass and I just kind of like him. Because he turns good in the end. Right? You know? But, and then the reason I have him cut off here is that you don't have to have all of Darth Vader, which is proven because he was maybe 20% human by the time it was over. Um, but yeah, you can have, here's your master, but your slave is only half of you. So you can ship independent objects. You can have five tables going off this direction, 10 tables going off that direction. It's very useful for things like we have a reporting server, and reporting is only against sales. But we don't want sales anywhere near HR, OK? So you can have your logical data over on the HR side. Now, obviously, we can use grant, revoke, and all those nice things. But nobody does that anymore, because I don't know why. It's, it's hard to type grant. It's hard to keep track of permissions. We'd much rather just let the super user access it. This is your data without F-Sync. This has absolutely nothing to do with this talk. Except that this is your data without F-Sync. If you're run, is anyone here, now I probably won't get you to raise your hand, but I might be able to tell by the look on your face. Is there anybody here running F-Sync off? Because if so, I'm gonna find out who you are, I'm gonna call your boss, I'm gonna get you fired. <laughs> Do not run with F-Sync off ever, except on a bulk load. That is the only time ever, bulk load. Don't do it then either. Yeah. <laughs> so you think you're doing a bulk load, but you, something happens, you'll think, oh, the database is fine. But it's not. You don't know. That's true. He's right. He's right. So you're rolling the dice no matter, oh, no, there's a kid. It, is the young gentleman staying? He is, oh, no. <laughs> okay, I need to go back to my disclaimer. Um, okay. So there's a, there's a, crap. OK, so there's actually a story behind this. Not last year, but the year before. Some of you may have seen this talk, OK? Uh, who here knows who Bruce Momjin is? OK, Bruce Momjin had his daughter, who is lovely and smart and sweet, introduce me. Like she got up and said, this is Josh Drake, and you know, he does all this stuff, and it's really important, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, God, really? But then she stayed. Totally screwed up my whole talk. The, I, I didn't, there was one point I didn't even realize she was still there. And I was like, you're still here? Shit. Oh, wait. I... <laughs> okay. So 
thank you, ma'am, for having him play with his iPhone out in the hallway because the whole talk would have taken on a, whole, a new level of I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, but yes, this is your data without F-Sync. Just don't do it. It's bad. And I agree with you in the bag. It, it's, it's, a, it's a bad idea. Let's talk about configuring the master for replication. This is binary replication. Uh, some of this has to do with logical, but it's primarily binary. We're going to deal with some listen addresses, shared preload libraries, max worker processes. Yes, you have to configure all this crap. Wall level, archive mode, archive commands. Some of these are optional. Max wall senders, wall keep segments. Do not ever use this stupid parameter. <laughs> okay, it, it's, it, it's, oh, I'll get to it. Max replication slots, track commits timestamp, and synchronous standby names. Listen addresses. Most of you should, does anyone here not know what this means? Okay, good. So basically this tells Postgres, where do I want to actually listen in terms of network? You can say splat, which is, I had never actually heard it called splat before. I call it a star. Uh, after watching Compose, I want to call it a snowflake. Um, Listen addresses, you can use a host name, local host. You can also use a combination thereof. Okay, so listen on local host and dot five, but not dot 10 or whatever, okay? Shared preload libraries. You do not need this for binary, but you do need it for logical. Only need it for logical replication, PG logical. It's required on master and slaves. On Ubuntu or Debian, you would, the shared preload libraries would be this assuming you have PG Logical installed. This won't work if you don't have it installed. I mean, I, that would seem to be obvious, but if you put, the, you'd be surprised how many people would say, well, I added the wine and restarted it and said it can't be found. Well, did you install it? Oh, I thought Postgres would do that for me. No, man, this isn't a Mac. <laughs> so, Max worker processes, it's used for binary and logical replication. It must be at least equal between the master and slaves or it won't start. Master will start, slave won't. And a slave will tell you. That's the one thing we're getting better at. We're not perfect yet, but we are getting better at saying, yo, doofus, this is why it's not starting up, versus error, failed to start, which, which is a good thing. Uh, increase on master based on number of slaves. So if you have two slaves at 10, you might want to have the master at 20. Otherwise, you know, you're going to overload them, and then you're going to wonder why things broke. You going to sit? No, you need to sit. Come on. You can do it. No, sit right up here. Right up here. Come on. You can be in front. This is Samir, Singapore, right? That's how international the United States are. We're conquering through invitation now. Wall level. Are the South Africans in here? There's one. You may, are, you, are you still seeing three? Down to two. Okay. All right, wall level, set the amount and type of information stored in the wall. There's multiple levels. There's minimal, archive, uh, hot standby, and logical. And they, are in they increment in the amount of information they're providing. So therefore, for logical or binary, just set it to logical. Logical will work with hot standby. Okay, so you, it, you don't have to, if you, you can set it to hot standby, but the problem is, is that once you want to deploy like hot standby and PG logical at the same time, it won't work without a restart. But if you just set it to logical, your hot standby is a work, and then later in life when you deploy the logical replication, that part's good, and you don't even have to have an outage. Archive mode set to on. The reason is this. You can leave it on and not use it, but if you need it, it's a restart. But if you leave it on, you don't have to restart because archive command is just a reload. So you can set archive command to something like bin true. If you look at me and say, well, I'm running Windows, I'm going to say, sucks to be you. You know, use whatever command does nothing. Um, any Windows users here? Windows Postgres users? Yourself? That's okay. I'm not going to pick on you. I'll pick on Windows, not you. Um, the great thing about Windows is that it reminds people why they should be running Linux. <laughs> um, I don't even, I, I have a brand new, beautiful, sexy laptop here that I only got a week and a half ago, and Linux got to the point where I literally, all I had to do was install Ubuntu, upgrade the kernel, and that's it. 
And I don't mean upgrade the kernel like I went through and set all the options and compiled it. I stopped doing that about 15 years ago. I mean, I hit app get upgrade, boom, and it just works. And we're talking 3K screen or uh, 4K screen, display port, SSD, 12 gig of RAM, the whole bit, even with the pass off for the 940M uh, NVIDIA, it just works. And that's something to be said with Linux because it didn't used to be that way. Um, but again, archive command, this is for point in time recovery. This is not replication specifically. It, however, can be used for replication. And there are good reasons to use it for replication if you have weird issues like intermittent link uh, droppage. Or, link, or, for example, let's say you have offices that are globally different, one in New York and one in Singapore. The link is probably not that great. Maybe the busiest times is six to six. Okay, you can have the archive command just return false from six to six, and it will keep all of those logs. And yes, I know about replication slots. We'll get there. Um, and then at 6.15, when the busy time's over, you reload with the new archive command, and it'll, all, it'll ship everything down to Singapore. Okay. Max wall senders. It's used to determine how many wall processes are created for sending walls to clients. Wall is wall archive log. It's your PGX log. Okay. Increase for PG-based backups, streaming replication, hot standby, and logical replication. In short, increase it. If you're doing any kind of setup that involves more than one server, increase it. Its overhead is very, very low. Just crank it up. 10, 15, 20. 1,000 is probably a bit much. But uh, Start with setting equal to max background processes. Wall keep segments. I know this is unflattering for her, um, but we'll get to that. How many segments to keep in case a standby goes offline for a period of time? This is why this is a stupid setting. It's a stupid setting because anyone who had been using this feature had already long scripted a way to not have that problem. It, this was almost like the, the, the hackers were like, you know what? We have to implement something. We don't even want to implement it right. So we'll just give someone a parameter and we'll just keep them all. And what this means is, is if a log cannot be shipped to a destination, in other words, it's not returning success, Postgres will keep X amount of logs up to wall keep settings, hopefully that you will connect before it overruns. Because once it overruns, you have to run another base backup. Okay. This is a, this, the only reason this is even in here is because I know not all of you are running 9.4 or 9.5. That is the only reason I even talk about this. Uh, use replication slots or archiving instead. Archiving because, for example, with, and don't use this software because it's deprecated, but with Pitter tools, um, what would happen is if it couldn't ship the log, it would queue the log and wait nicely just for the slave that failed. Not for everybody, not globally, but just, just like replication slots in a lot of ways. What re and replication slots we'll get to, but it's a very similar scenario. This graphic, it, it's not really contextual, um, but I, I kind of liked it. <laughs> so, um, and I, you know, I have to give her credit. I, she, when I've watched the Democratic debates and I've watched the Republican debates, and, I, and it used to be that I would watch the Republican debates, but now I really prefer to watch the Democrat debates. Um, she looks like an elegant, sharp, intelligent, brilliant woman, powerful in what she's trying to deliver. Is she corrupt? Well, yeah, she's a politician. That's the way it works. And then you get Bernie. Bernie looks like the guy that's going to throw lemons at you from a porch somewhere in the south when it's 172 degrees because you're smiling while you ride your bike. You know, he just does, he looks angry. Max replication slots. It's the max number of slots to create to keep logs for disconnected clients. I, a lot of people say, oh, one or two is probably fine. Well, one or two is probably fine if you only need one or two. I'd actually set it to five, six, seven. It's very low impact, but you never know when out of nowhere, your developer's gonna say, 
I need a base backup that's up to date as soon as possible. If you've got this set up, you can just do that. And then it'll catch up at the very end, and then you can drop the slot and let them go off and do what they want without really affecting production. Um, use these, not wall keep segments. If you're running 9.4 or 9.5 and you're still using wall keep segments, time to review. Use replication slots instead. Uh, here's a real simple example. Select PG create physical replication slots, Briber zero, select star from PG replication slots, boom. It's not active because we're not connected to it from a slate. Okay? Track commit timestamp. It is useful for conflict resolution. Instead, just don't write to a scriber table. So where this actually comes from is that PG Logical is based off the BDR code. And multi-master really means solving conflicts. That's really what we're dealing with when we're dealing with multi-master. It's not about scaling. It's not about high availability. It's about making your life harder trying to figure out which commit was the most appropriate commit to be stored. Well, track commit timestamp can help you do that. You don't really need that with PG Logical because it's master slave, but you could up in, end up in a scenario since logical replication isn't read only, someone could write to the replicated slave table. And then you have to figure stuff out. Now, no one's asked a question yet, so either I am very thorough, you're terrified, or I'm missing something. Anybody got any questions? Because we're moving really fast, I think. Yeah, really fast. Yes? No, you have to install BDR. Uh, there's also others, but they're Perl and trigger based, and there's crazy, and then there's stupid. I'll stick with crazy. Yes? That's different. That's uh, uh, horizontal partitioning. And yes, it can. You can make it like multi-master, but that's really, a, we're talking about a totally different beast at that point. Which, it's cool, they actually, Postgres XL just released RC1 for 9.5. It's, it's a very neat product, it's binary, or it's uh, binary and source code compatible uh, in terms of being a fork. Uh, completely open source, Postgres QL, so if you had like Drupal, you can just connect to it. Um, they does horizontal partitioning of Postgres QL nodes. The only downside to it is I only know three people that have ever used it. So your mileage may vary, kind of like a Volkswagen diesel. Oh, come on. Someone has had to have re read the news on that. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of things. And they, and they got different uh, re uh, conflict resolutions that you can use. A new, or what is it, last commit or newest commit or whatever, and then other variances that you can use. But it is not a simple piece of software. You will pay someone eventually. Um, and hopefully it'll be me uh, for me to tell you to get off BDR. Um, and no disrespect to the second quadrant, really. It, it, they have taken on a monumental technological feat. You need to understand that in the database world, there is no harder problem than multi-master, none. So when I mock them, it is out of love because I wouldn't even bother to try. Even, to get, even if everyone in this room got their companies to sponsor me, us to do it, we would do it on the premise that it's gonna fail. But we would happily do it, but it's not going to succeed because multi-master by default does not work. Yes, you will write to all your nodes. But the moment you have to do conflict resolution, it's not working. You are fixing the software. That's what that means. So I prefer, especially now with 9.5, with how far we scale up and how big machines are getting now, let's just you know, add another four SSDs. Put that in a RAID 10. Add another 512 gig of RAM. We'll make sure you can pull it off. Use logical replication to push off your, your reads and use load balancing. You know, don't worry about multi-master. It's a very obscure problem to be fixed. Anybody else? Someone else back there? Yes. Right. Now, one thing about multi-master, especially with BDR, because it's asynchronous, 
The really cool thing that it can do is the salesman problem. Who here knows what the salesman problem is? Okay, salesman problem is this. You've got a guy who's on the road and you've got an app on a laptop. Now, a lot of this problem isn't in existence for a lot of us because we all have 4G or Marriott Wi-Fi when it works, you know, that kind of thing. Or we can run down to Starbucks. You know, we have a way to get an internet connection somewhere. Um, but especially in you know, the olden days, like 2005, um, that wasn't the case. And you'd have a traveling salesman with the exact same application on their laptop that they run at their desktop. And they would be updating their quotes and their estimates and all this stuff. But how do they get it back into the master server? Well, BDR is a solution to that. They're running BDR locally, and the moment they go click into the dock, everything syncs back up until there's a conflict. But that is a very good cause for multi-master. Now, a lot of people are like, Oracle does it. Yeah, Oracle's got many billions of dollars to waste on yachts. We don't. And anyone who's actually used Rack will tell you it also does not work. And that basically that comes all the way back to what I was saying about you're not understanding the problem if you're running multi-master. There are a few cases where it is appropriate, but it never actually works. All right. Um, again, instead, just don't write to a subscriber table. Synchronous standby names. It's the name of your synchronous standbys. Just use the IP address. It's the easiest. Uh, I actually don't like this. I would prefer to use the names because then you can just change DNS <laughs> instead of worrying about IP addresses. But eh, all the docs say use the IP address, so use the IP address. Remember in case of slave outage, synchronous replication is an outage on the master too. Yeah, that's not happening. And I'm JD, so we're just gonna deal. Um, she's telling me I only have five minutes. For everyone who's like, what the hell is he talking about? Um, but let's see how close we can get. Configuration slave, hot standby, max standby, archive delay. Well, we're just going to go through this. Hot standby, set to on for hot standby, not needed for logical replication. Hot standby means you can read from the slave. You can report against it. You can take backups off of it. You don't have to deal with your master. Okay? Max standby, archive delay. How long do I wait before I cancel these queries? Basically, if you have a long running query on your slave, there's a limit that you can set to make those cancel so that they don't cause a bloat on the master. Setting negative one means a standby will wait indefinitely. Only applies if you're using archiving, not streaming. Same thing, but this is for streaming. Okay? Note about delay setting. See? He's not a happy man. Do we really want a grumpy old man? In the office, we had that. It was Reagan. It was horrible. I actually read an article from, about, from his staff saying they were so frustrated with him. You know, a lot of people like to, a lot, especially older people, are like, oh, Reagan was a great president. No, 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 no. Reagan had a great staff. Reagan was a great napper. Not rapper, napper. <laughs> the setting is not the same as the maximum length of a time a query can run before cancellation. Rather, it is the maximum total time allowed to apply wall data once it has been received from the primary server. Thus, if one query has resulted in significant delay, subsequent conflicting queries will have much less grace time until the standby server has caught up again. I'm just gonna let you chew on that in your head. We don't have time to explain it, but that's why I say read the fine manual. I almost didn't say fine. Wall receiver status interval. I hope you clapped that loud. Tell the standby how often to update its master on the current status. The standby needs to tell the master, this is where I am, this is where I am, so that the master can continue to maintain itself. If set too high, PG stat replication will be out of date, and you may overrun replication timeout on the master. Okay. Hot standby feedback allows the standby, including cascading, to tell the master what queries are being run so that a master doesn't remove rows during cleanup and cause query cancellation. Wouldn't that suck? You're in the middle of a report, you're doing stuff, and then all of a sudden the master removes half the rows that you're reporting on, and it tells the slave, sorry, 
We don't have that data anymore. And then you got to call your boss and say, you know that four hour report that takes to run? I'm going home, see you tomorrow, click. <laughs> Can cause bloat. Also, humans shed about 600,000 particles of skin every hour. You are not the first person to sit in that chair. <laughs> wall, re wall receiver, Dave's like, oh my lord. D wall receiver timeout. Terminate replication connections that are inactive longer than the specified number of milliseconds. If your slaves are just hanging out doing nothing, just dun -dun 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 -dun, waiting for something, it'll terminate those connections. They will reconnect when they need to. Wall ret retrieve, retry interval. Keep trying. How often? How do I make a base backup? Because that's actually what you're here for. You don't care about all the other stuff I told you. <laughs> Configure PG logical. This is actually easier than it looks if you do it right. If you do it wrong, you got to start all over. It sucks. Fail over, fail back, get help and donate. Make a base backup. You got PG base backup and you got rsync. There's a lot of other tools. I could write an entire training on just how to do this. Okay, but we're not going to cover that. PG based backup, use with the dash X option. That means stream. It's faster. It streams the wall archives to you as you're taking the base backup. It is not particularly useful with large databases. That is because it is single threaded. If you've got a terabyte database, you're waiting for a terabyte copy over one connection. It takes a while. Okay? It's particularly useful with smaller databases. The inverse is also true. If you have a reasonably small database, there is no easier way to get a base backup. Just use this, boom, you got your, you've got your uh, database ready to go. Uh, well, it depends on the hardware and the network speed, uh, but I would say, what do you think? 100 gig? Yeah, about 100, 100 gig. Can be used to make, can be used to take a tar-based backup. Uh, you can tell it, use tar instead of plain text, but there's some limitations to that. Read the manual, I know you won't, that's okay, call me, I'll charge you for it. <laughs> R-Sync. Within the map, this is actually how you do it with rsync, the actual steps involved. I don't share my slides, so pay attention. I might share my slides, it depends on my mood. Within the master, create a replication slot named X or use PG receive X log, which will create the replication slot for you. Within the master, execute PG start backup. It takes arguments, specifically, it takes a name of the base backup that you're taking and it asks whether or not you want a fast checkpoint or a slow checkpoint. Unless you are loaded up on your server, use fast. If you don't use fast, you have to wait for checkpoint timeout divided by checkpoint completion target, which could be anywhere from nothing to an hour, okay? With uh, archive PG data using rsync, make sure the target is empty because you're not gonna use the checksum feature because it's very slow. Within the, ma uh, within the master, execute PG stop backup. It does not take arguments. Create a recovery.conf within the slave. I also am not, I'm not mentioning here. Oh, right, because we're using a replication slot. Create a recovery.conf. This is what your recovery.conf looks like. Our replication slot name, that's what we created. Uh, our primary connection info, the master of the data, the master database. And we're going to go into standby mode. We're not actually failing over or using it for devel. Start Postgres on the slave. That's it. Now here's a tip. RSync is not any faster than PG-based backup unless you multi-thread it. Yes, there are multi-threaded scripts out there. What it basically does is you, take, you tell RSync, give me the list of what you're going to copy, and then you cut the list up and pass it to multiple RSync commands. It's beautiful. It's quick. It's very Linuxy because you're using a lot of scripts to do what a program already should. On the master, oh, this is PG logical. On the master, assuming you have PG logical installed and you've created the extension on the logical database you're going to replicate, and you have put pglogical.so in the preload shared library thing. Can't remember it off the top of my head because I'm moving too fast. Select pglogical create node, node name. Uh, I love DSN, data source name. Uh, this is your connection. The, uh, this is who I am, okay? This is the actual master IP, the port, and the DB name that we are going to replicate. Then we create a table for testing. Then we tell PG Logical we are replicating everything set at all tables. There's also the ability to add just one or two tables or whatever uh, in the public schema. So I created log the, uh, logical, the logical test table in the public schema. Now it is ready to replicate. It's not replicating, but it's ready to replicate. 
on the slave. PG logical create node. I am replica zero. I am the next slave. This is my host. This is the slave IP port and the name of the database that is being replicated. Then we subscribe. We say PG logical create subscription, subscription name, replica zero relations, provider. Notice that's the master IP, specifically the master IP. Port 5432, DB name logical. Synchronized structure, true. That means it will actually move over your table structure, your DDL. Synchronized data, true. These are actually by default true. I just put them in here for explicit purposes. Which means as soon as this sub subscription is created, push the data over, all of it. And that's it for PG Logical. Now, here's the catch with PG Logical. It's not done. It doesn't support cascading replication. It's not very well documented, but it does work quickly and effectively for master, slave, and partial replication. Okay? We do know, as you know, we are out of time, and I just love this graphic. I just typed in ugly dog into Google Images. Get help, IRC. I know a lot of you are like, what's IRC? It's Slack, but works. <laughs> Mailing list, and it's a standard, and it's not proprietary, and it's not closed source, and it's not yelling at you all the time. <laughs> Mailing list, PGSQL general, PGSQL hackers, user groups. If you're not part of a user group, be part of a user group. If you can't be part of a user group, start a user group. If you need help starting a user group, contact me. I will not bite. I will actually be helpful. Or Call me, don't call me about user groups. That will piss me off. <laughs> you can call me to have me spend money. Or have you spend money, sorry. And donate. And my time is up, but, any questions? Thank you very much.